Thank you very much. Right. So, um, I normally write depressing shit because <laughs> uh, because it's almost hard to do. But this is kind of my happy fucker. Uh, so bear with me. Uh, okay. Uh, I can't remember the name. So we'll just go for it. An old man sits on a boat painted a soft blue. He slowly untangles the tangled mess of his yellow clothesline type wire of a fishing net while wiping his hand across, one can only guess, his unprotected leathery balding head. His beard is white but tight. It holds no secret to the observer. A simple man, it said, all he needs are his boat and his net and he can live. But he still wants same as everyone, wants to catch a thousand fish on a boat made for one so he can sail into shore, take his stock and sell it for cash, take that cash and feed his family. He still wants currency, even though all he needs are a boat and a net. I was born on a boat. The sun, it shone in the summer, even when it didn't, and my sister, brother, and I ordered people out of the way as we sailed our little yachts down the street in that order. Mine was black with purple stripes. My dad went fishing to get it for me. It didn't have those little ball things on the spokes that moved and clacked as the wheel turned, because the noise, it irritated me. But if I wanted, I could have had that. We sailed our little yachts down our street and through the lane that cut like through the golf course next to a tree that grew sideways because a car hit it once where a tree house was never built because we got distracted by the conkers growing on its neighbours. We came through that dusty lane and onto Wicklow Street where the real rich people lived who went to said golf course and drove BMWs. I had a friend called Simon who lived there. He had a swimming pool in the front garden of his house. I used to think that he was spoiled and I wasn't. We were on our way to a friend's house and we were going down on Wicklow Street. Now, we could have taken the shortcut. Ah, fuck. We were on our way to a friend's house. Now, they had a wasp hive in a room in their house. Now, I know that you're thinking that a wasp hive is not a good thing to have in a house, and now I'd probably agree. And back then, if it had been my house, I would have agreed. But I was 10, and it wasn't my house. And they had a big back garden with trees, and I used to swing, and their mother cooked fresh bread, and all 10 of them would sit down to dinner whilst I swung from a tree. Sometimes, i pretend to go to the toilet just to cut through the kitchen just to smell the feast hoping to be asked to join they never did ask but they knew why i walked we were on a, uh, we went down wicklow street now we could have taken the shortcut that went down past the trees from the apple we used to rub or the black water well that i still believe is haunted we could have gone that way i went through the golf course over the secret fence that went to some poor man's garden the adrenaline would pump in my body as i ran from him but i don't remember his face because he never caught me we didn't go that way instead we went past the man who taught baseball in the park the mother said he liked children a bit too much but i just thought he was nice he inspired my father my father fished out a baseball set the whole neighborhood even the people who didn't like each other played baseball all day, every day for that entire summer. And as we came into the drive, the small pebbles of the crunching beneath the wheels of my tire, a wasp, it landed on my face right fucking here. I thought it'll fly away and I couldn't stop cycling, but the wind held it to me and it started to crawl up my nose. So I hit myself in the face and it stung my lip. My lip, it swelled up and hung down over my teeth like a stalactite. That day we all went to a movie, but I couldn't enjoy it. Not with the pain in my lip. We've all got to ride the boat. Catch some fish. There's no escaping that. Some of us never get on it. Some of us fall off into the ice-cold water, get caught up in the tangle of our yellow net, staring at the base of a blue boat, watching our lives fading away, watching bubbles of memories carrying everything but was things to the surface, focusing on nothing but a swollen lip and a ruined movie, but sometimes we just need to calm down. Pull that net, restrict in our breath, and reach for the surface. Pull ourselves onto the boat, and remember, we've all got a fish. There's no escaping that. But while we do, we can remember baseball in the park, 
unbuilt tree houses, wicked wells, and men whose faces we'll never remember. And if it wasn't for the occasional swollen lip, we wouldn't have these memories. So stay on your boat. Listen to the sound of the waves. Because that wasps thing, well, it's only a tiny part of a giant storm. Thank you.